Oh shit. I know, I know, it's been two whole videos since I've even mentioned trains. I know it's what you guys crave. So today we're going to talk about grade separation, mainly with trains and railroad lines. It's going to be a relatively short video because I'm working on a larger project in the background. So hit that subscribe button and turn on that bell to be notified in the future about my big projects. In New Brunswick, we have a giant viaduct for the Northeast Corridor. For those who don't know, the Northeast Corridor is America's busiest passenger rail line and network. It's home to Amtrak and many of the commuter railroads that use it. Here in New Brunswick, we mainly see NJ Transit trains and Amtrak, with the occasional Conrail shared assets freight train. The bridge that you're seeing now was constructed in 1903 by the Pennsylvania Railroad, and eventually electrified in 1933. This viaduct replaced a wooden two-track bridge that existed in the same place before. Here's a picture of the viaduct when it looked a little newer in 1974. Note that Highway Route 18 has not been built yet and that the DNR Canal still exists under it. I have another video about that here. The bridge is a prominent feature of the viaduct, but the rest of the line runs through New Brunswick above its streets, for about 11 blocks or 1.2 kilometers. This viaduct is known as an above grade separation, meaning that the roads below do not interfere with the trains above. Above grade rail lines come in many forms, bridges, flyovers, viaducts, or elevated tracks, but no matter, it will always be separated from road traffic. On the other hand, below grade separation is very similar to above grade, just the formula is inverted. Typically trains run under the roads either using a tunnel, trench, or depression. A good example of this is in Summit, New Jersey, where the NJ Transit, Gladstone, and Morrison Essex lines run. You can see how they've been routed through the center of town, but through a concrete trench, avoiding road intersections entirely. This is entirely different from an at-grade crossing. An at-grade crossing is what most people think of when you first mention a railroad crossing. Typically, there are safety measures like gates, bells, and lights, along with safety measures to protect the rails from damage, like concrete around where the rails are placed through the road, to avoid damage from road traffic. At-grade crossings are generally the worst option out of the three. Avoiding conflict between trains and cars is the goal of any crossing, but the likelihood of it happening is the greatest here. If you want examples of this, just go to our road cam, type in train in the search, and you are greeted with a ton of great, but also bad examples. Bruh. When should you actually use grade separation? Well, theoretically, grade separation should happen in as many places as possible. However, cost-wise, space-wise, this isn't always possible. It's not logistically possible and financially possible to build a bridge for roads or for railroads everywhere to avoid conflicts, especially in places where tracks are rarely used or roads have a very low volume of automobiles. It's also hard to build grade separation into an industry section of a city. Oftentimes there are many spur tracks going into factories or warehouses, and it's not possible to separate every single one of them from road level. Oftentimes the freight that's moving on these spur tracks isn't very fast anyway, so there isn't much danger. The better question would be, where do you add or build separation then? The two main answers to this come down to frequency of trains and the speed of trains. Frequency of trains is an obvious reason for separation. Are there so many trains on a line that often they back up traffic continuously at crossings? Are there lengthy trains that sit at locations long enough to cause traffic? If so, then yes, those are places where separation should occur. There's a crossing in Hagayashi Ozajawa, Japan? It, it, I, I'm doing my best. <laughs> this crossing crosses eight tracks. The crossing only exists because car and foot traffic is low, but this is a great example of a place that should have grade separation. The Northeast Corridor is a great example of a line that meets both the speed and frequency of trains that require a line to be grade separated. And about 99% of the Northeast Corridor, this is the case, with only a few crossings in Connecticut where the speed is low enough. Grade separation is rarely a topic to discuss until it's too late. Only once a grade crossing has racked up too many collisions is it actually discussed, especially here in the United States where trains in transit are the first to get shafted for budgets. But with the new generation taking over in politics, I'm hopeful that this will change, since most young people look favorably upon transit and trains now.